guys, I'm Nicolette, and today Brian and I are here with James Fazio. He is the co-founder and CTO over at a company called Flume, where they're working on some smart technology um, revolving around water. So thank you for joining us, James. We really appreciate your time today. Yeah, thanks so much, Nicolette and Brian, and great to meet you guys. You too. So kick us off, James. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey to Flume. Sure. Um, yeah, I can kind of start at the beginning. Um, you know, I was uh, going to college in um, the central coast of California, so kind of right in between Los Angeles and San Francisco at a university called Cal Poly. Um, I sort of, I, I went into Cal Poly um, as a software engineer, um, but I had always, um, I kind of had picked that degree because um, I had always wanted to get into like the tech startup world, and I knew that was like, you know, a common way to do so. Um, and a good kind of starting path to, you know, start with the engineering side so you can get an understanding um, of how things work and then kind of work yourself into the more business or product side. Um, so I, I definitely knew I wanted to do something entrepreneurial. I wasn't very interested in um, going to work, you know, for one of the, the big tech companies where, you know, you're more of a cognitive machine um, as opposed to uh, building fast Um without, you know, a lot of the red tape. Um, so I, I had, you know, there was a few ideas I had throughout college and I think everyone does. And most of those ideas are, are pretty terrible. Um, <laughs> I think when you're in college, you're, you're kind of focused on the problems of um, college students that every single college entrepreneur starts thinking about. And everyone comes up with, you know, the same five ideas um, that aren't really, <laughs> <laughs> you know, where, where can I get the cheapest booze? You know, where are the parties at? You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, stuff dealing with registration issues, all the stuff that are kind of like in that ecosystem of college. Um, but so senior year, um, you know, one of my friends called me, and this is actually uh, the co-founder um, and CEO of, the, of Flume. Uh, Eric gave me a call and we had been friends for a number of years at college. Uh, and he starts pitching me this concept um around water in the home and you know it started off very simple um and it was very relevant uh, to what was going on in california at the time this was kind of at the end of our last serious drought in 2015 mm -hmm. so kind of water was on everyone's mind everyone was kind of thinking about it especially in california where we were asked to like conserve our water usage not um, even conserve the cost of water in california is like insane yeah, yeah it, so it got really expensive um and you know to make it even more relevant uh, my parents actually they were in a utility um where they were imposing fines if you went over a certain amount of water usage uh, wow. but the the problem was you had no idea when you went over that allocation right. because there's there's no data mm -hmm. around water right, at right. all and it's not like the utility is calling you on the phone saying, hey, you're about to hit your uh, limit. Right. Um, you might better start conserving. Right. You got 99 uh, gallons left and that's it. You know, exactly. And they actually got hit with an eight hundred dollar fine. Um, and I was like, oh, my God, like this is, you know, mm -hmm. fairly serious. Um, so the original concept that Eric was pitching was just like, hey, look, you know, the state's trying to conserve water because, you know, water is, is tight right now. And we don't know how long this drought's going to last. Um, and this is probably going to become more and more relevant, you know, with everything going on, um, you know, with climate change. Um, they said, there's just no data at all around water usage. Mm -hmm. No one knows how much they use. No one knows how much the irrigation is using. No one knows if it's better to wash your dishes or to run it through the dishwasher. Um, you know, there's this huge mystery. Um, and even, you know, to take it a step further on the leak side, when you have a leak, you have no idea it's going on for months, you know, until something serious happens until you like start poking the wall and you're like, uh -huh. Oh my God, this wall is like moldy. I can actually like put my finger like, wait, James, do you have through. the answer? Do you have the answer to the question about the dishes versus the dishwasher? I do. Can you, yes. Can you tell me please? <laughs> I'm, I'm dying. Yeah. If you have it like a fairly modern dish washer, you uh -huh. know, within the last 10, 15 years, it's much, much more efficient to use that um, than actually do a full wash by hands. Wow. Okay, yeah. good. I'm going to let my husband know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're Definitely. talking about leaves. I'm sorry. I've been wondering that for years. So <laughs> I know it's kind of like one of the funny ones that everyone kind of thinks about. 
<laughs> yeah, so so Eric was pitching this idea, um, and you know, it, it was very simple at first, and we were just like, you know, this is something like that probably enough people care about that we should, you know, start seeing if we could turn this into something. Um, and we were pretty fortunate um, at, at the university, there was a fairly good um, entrepreneurship program at the time. And that's since grown to be something that's pretty spectacular. Um, so we were actually able to take this on as like a senior project um, and start researching this. Like, can we build something? Is there something here? Is this something that people will pay for? Uh, what is it gonna actually take? Um, and, you know, kind of by the end of that, we were in a position where we had enough data um, and sort of an idea of how this could all work that we actually, you know, we're like, well, why don't we take a shot at actually um, moving this forward? Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how the technology works? Yeah. Yeah. So so very early on, uh, we had two very important goals um, that have remained with us today. Um, and these were around the product side. So one, we wanted to make a product that was a single sensor. So you didn't have to mm. install a bunch of stuff in your home. Right. And that single sensor was gonna be able to manage your indoor and your outdoor water usage. So we didn't wanna just capture the indoor because if you have irrigation, that's gonna make up 60, 70% of your water usage. So it's really important that you get that. And then the second, uh, big goal that we had was we want to make something that was really easy to install. Mm -hmm. um, water, the water space and the technology that have been used to kind of um, leak detection and water management technology has been traditionally very hard to install um, where you have to go in, cut pipes, have a plumber come out. It ends up being a very expensive process and kind of messy. Uh, so we wanted something I could install in 10, 15 minutes and anyone could install, like we didn't want to have like any limitations um, mm -hmm. and make that pretty much frictionless. So, so now when you install it, right, it installs around the meter. I was looking at some of the videos. So can you explain how that works and how the sensors work to let you know how much, how it's monitoring it? Yeah, yeah, we, we took a pretty unique approach. Um, so the pretty much all homes in the US now, and there are exceptions to this. Some, some homes are have well um, water usage, but um, if pretty much if you're paying a water utility bill, you have a water meter. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we looked, we said, well, okay, at the water meter, that's where the water goes from being the mm -hmm. ownership of the cities to yours. Um, Cause everything past the water is now your or water meter is, is your responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. So we started looking at these water meters and how they actually operated. Um, and the vast majority of water meters, the way they work is as water flows through them, they actually rotate a disc inside the meter and mm -hmm. that disc in turn rotates a magnet. Um, and then the dial, of course, on top is reading right. that magnet and that's how it spins. So we, um, we were looking at this and actually, I remember we originally, your iPhone actually has like a magnetometer in it mm -hmm. um, and you can download apps to access that. So we put our iPhone up to these water meters and we saw this signal come out um, when you were running water said oh that's interesting you know that looks fairly measurable and you've turned the water off that signal goes away um so the way it actually works is yeah we read that magnetic signal mm -hmm. um, as the water meter is spinning and what's great about this is you know it's going to match the water meter readings like pretty perfectly um that's what you're getting built off of and that's all the water that's coming into your house so how does it transmit the data then to your phone? Yeah. Yeah. So there's actually two pieces of hardware. Um, so there's the sensor that goes out um, on the water meter. These water meters can be really far away from the home. So they're not going to have like direct access to Wi-Fi. You're not going to get a Bluetooth signal out from there. Um, so what we did is we have a second piece of hardware that sits in the home um, that's connected to your Wi-Fi. And those two pieces of hardware communicate over um, a radio frequency. Um, once it's in the home on that base, we just send it over Wi-Fi, And then of course the data is accessible via an app, um, via the web, uh, or any other method. That is super cool. Mm -hmm. So now, so some, okay. So some homes, right. Like you said, they're the, the water meter sort of far away. And then some homes, depending on sometimes the water meter is installed in the house. Right. Did you guys yep. have to take, I obviously you had to take that in consideration, whether it's going to be buried in the ground 
right? The sensor is going to be buried in the ground in terms of the ratings and stuff like that versus the home. Is there different models or is it just one sort of sensor that's rated for, you know, weather and. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so we wanted to just, we didn't want to have like a bunch of different SKUs having to deal with like the basement versus like an outdoor installation. So yeah, it's, it's one sensor. So it doesn't matter where your water meter is. Um, and that thing is, you know, pretty rock solid. So it's of course, weatherproof, waterproof, because nasty things can happen out in that uh, water meter pit. Right. Um, and we actually started, you know, we realized, you know, once we solved the outdoor problem, like the indoor problem is going to be extremely easy. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. You have yeah. a nice, easy connection. Um, everything's very clean. Uh, and, and in California, we deal with some of the hardest um, meter pit situations. I remember the first, one of the first places we piloted our product, we wanted to choose a place that was very hard uh, to get these installed. And we worked with this city kind of north of San Diego, uh, where I'd say the average distance between the meter and the home was somewhere like, 500 to a thousand feet away. Wow. Like literally like you would have to drive to your meter. So we're like, okay, if we work here, I think we're going to be able mm -hmm. to handle the rest of the U S like pretty solidly. Right. Um, and we spent a lot of time and a lot of development, um, to get that pretty perfect. Um, and ended up having to basically roll our own sort of specialized, um, radio communication protocol to get that work and design our own antennas. Cause it's such a specialized use case. Now, besides distance, okay, so recently I had like a, you know, like my, some of my piping run back out to the main, right? Yep. And water meter was about, you know, I live in a really old area. The water meter was about seven feet underground. So does that, does that have any issues like how deep the water meter is or is it sort of like the same as distance? Yeah, they, they all play a role and it, it can depend on the material of your lid too. So like if you have a metal lid and it's really deep, that of course makes it more challenging because um, you have a lot of earth to get through. So yeah, and, and we've seen all these use cases and that's, that's why it, what makes this like a pretty unique um, kind of scenario for the smart home because typically most smart home products are installed inside the house. And if they right. are outside, they're like on the wall of the house or something that's very right. close. Um, this was like, Oh, yeah, we have to go like design our own sort of protocol because this is so unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you, did you guys, um, you know, did you guys have a, a team of engineers? Were you guys doing the design yourself? How, how did that work? I know, you know, startup mode. So how, how does that work? Yeah. yeah, we actually, in terms of the product, um, so all the hardware embedded um, antenna stuff, we actually all did that in-house. Um, we were able to find like very specialized resources to help us out um, with some of the more challenging pieces. I mean, of course, something like intended design, like, uh, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like a dark art. Um, right. There's it's only a handful. Specialized. <laughs> yeah. 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 So of course we're not going to just like sit there trying to figure that out. Um, so the, and of course the radio pro protocol itself, we worked with like an expert in the field um, to help solve that. Awesome. So, so, I have, I have a question. So, you know, we talked about your, it's, it's going over to the app, um, you know, and you're reading your data there. Are you also, is it connected? Like, can you control or ask like, you know, and I don't, almost don't even want to say it like Alexa or Google home. Cause someone's is going to go off. Do you know what I mean? And find out your information. Are you, have you connected it from that aspect? Um, in terms of like voice integrations? Yeah. So we, we do have an Alexa integration. Actually we're working on a Google one now too. Um, you know, and that's, you can ask simple things. Do I have a leak right now? You know, what right. is my water usage for today? Very simple. If, 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 if you do want to interact with voice. Yeah. Awesome. Is there a way to, I mean, well, what do you do once you get this data? Right. So yeah. I, this is a twofold question. So the first part is what does the user do once they understand where they're at? And the second part of that question is now that you're collecting all this data as a company, what is, what are you planning on doing with it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, there's pretty much two reasons that people would purchase our product. And one is to get a like better understanding of what's going on in their home. And especially for people with uh, high water bills to try and bring that water usage down. And then the other one, which is the more common one, and it resonates, you know, uh, whether you have high water bills or not is leak detection and protection, right? If you want to, if you have a leak, you want to know about it right away because leaks can be very damaging. Um, and actually, I think, you know, as of the last couple of years, it's the number one um, insurance claim that's paid out is, is from water damage. Mm -hmm. So when you 
when you um, install Flume right away, you can see, um, you know, the real time water usage of your house. And then after a few days, you can start to see this is how much my irrigation uses. This is how much my shower uses. Do I have anything that's sort of out of whack? Um, you know, 60% of our users actually do find a leak within the first month and they're actually alerted of that on the phone. So, you know, you'll get a text, an email, a push notification if, if something seems like out of whack. Um, and then, you, you know, the next follow-up is we provide kind of steps to help you try and locate that leak. And of course, if you can't find that leak, then taking it all the way to, you know, actually getting a professional service out there to help you um, find that and fix that. Um, another really common one that we see is once people install, especially if they have irrigation, they realize, oh my God, my irrigation is actually running six times a week. I thought it was running once a week because that's <laughs> in the middle of the night. You don't see it. And then right. that's a way to bring down your water bill immediately, right. you know, by 10, 15, 20, $30 a month, um, you know, right off the bat. Yeah. Your, your app needs to tell the irrigation app to change itself. <laughs> you know? yeah. I'm like, I'm, are you guys in New York? Because I'm buying a house and I'm starting to think about, this is a great idea. You can install it yeah. anywhere, Nicolette. Yeah. I'm, anywhere. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> but back to data, right? So what, what exactly? So you released some stats last um, last month about you know water usage during the pandemic, and and you know I will ask about that. But you know back to that data question. Um, you know, what do you what does the future look like once you start collecting all this data? Yeah. So on the consumer side, you know I kind of talked to that of like where the value lies. Um, one of our big partners um, and one of like our big channels is water utilities themselves. Um, so what we do with water utilities is we'll roll out programs um, where essentially anyone in the water utility can buy our device um, for like a way discounted rate. And, and then in turn, we kind of work with the utility on an aggregate level um, to get a better kind of view of what's going on in their utility. Um, Cause even the most water utilities are quite a bit behind um, electric and gas utilities in terms of like the data they have and the insights they have uh, to that data. Um, so this is a very inexpensive way um, that utility doesn't have to roll out something system wide because even if you get to, you know, two, three, five percent per penetration um, of your sort of customer base having our device, that's enough to start like actually painting a picture and actually starting to make some decisions that can really save the utility um, money and actually figure out where they need to be spending their money. Um, so just like as an example, yeah, so we, we, we had a, um, we did a webinar last month that you were just referring to, to kind of look at like the effects that COVID had on indoor water usage. Um, since our uh, device is um, recording water usage so mm -hmm. frequently, we're actually able to delineate indoor versus outdoor water usage, um, which is something utilities have never had access to before. Um, so with that, we were able to actually look at indoor water usage versus outdoor water usage, and then look at those trends kind of as the lockdown started happening last year and seeing, oh yes, there was a huge spike in indoor usage. And, you know, is that actually going to ever come back down to normal rates or are people going to be, you know, more working from home into the future? Is this going to become more normal? This is all stuff like utilities they can't really see. Um, and this is like data that we can provide back to them. Um, and this helps with like future planning, you know, based off the property type, how much um, water usage is this house expected to use, you know, based off the home value, based off all these different um, other things that we can pull in and kind of merge with our data um, to start giving them some, you know, some insights and some tools that, you know, help them plan uh, for a better future for their utility. So now you, you mentioned some of the home data. So is it also basing it on like, okay, you know, you mentioned home value, right? So is it basing off like square footage and things like that? Like if a house is a certain size, it's more likely, or if it has more bathrooms, is it more likely to use more water? That's yeah. And that's what we're taking a look at too. It's like, what are those parameters like about the house? Is it the lot size? Is it the, you know, the square footage? Is it the amount of bathrooms? Like what actually plays a role? Um, and you know, which of those factors actually kind of like really crank up the usage or really crank it down, um, which, which in turn helps for planning as well. Yeah. Now, is there a comparison to like other users in your community? Like, so, you know, if mm -hmm. you have roughly the same square footage and the same amount of bathrooms, you use 25% more or 25% less than, you know. Yeah. 
today in our app, we, we give like a very basic sort of like percentage comparison. And, and what we do is we look for similar households like within your area. And if we right. can't find like that many similar households in your area, we kind of broaden out um, that a little bit mm -hmm. um, and try and give you like some sort of comparison. It's like, am I actually like efficient at, right. you know, using water or am I really bad? Yeah. Um, so you can definitely get that scale. And that's something that we're working on um, to make that better and better, um, you know, to help our customers. So, Brian, I had a feeling you were going to come up with some AI question, but I, I there, figured there, I'd beat you to there, it. <laughs> there is. I mean, that's where we were sort of going with some of the predictions. Are you guys building, is some of that AI based, some of those where it's looking at that information and going, okay, this is, this is, you know, where you are, or even some of the recommendations are, you know, around like, or there's, is there a leak? Like, you know, is it data driven? Is it very AI driven? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great question. Um, yeah. So about... A year and a half ago, we sort of released our first sort of machine learning feature, and mm -hmm. we've been continuing to build on that. So now our leak detection actually is, you know, AI based. Um, so rather than just like if we see water running for a certain amount of time, right. just like triggering, um, you know, an alert, you know, what if your irrigation cycle lasts an hour and a half or two hours? Mm -hmm. Or what if you have a water softener that runs for two hours? That pretty much looks like a leak. Mm -hmm. um, what our system can do is, we recognize these common patterns and we can mm -hmm. filter those out. So if your irrigation runs, you know, you're not going to get that, that leak notification. Right. Um, but if the water continues to run after that irrigation cycle, then you will be, you know, you'll get that alert. Um, it, so we're getting better at better at like during like true leak detection, like, only sort of alerting the user, like when something's actually wrong. Right. Do you think you'll get to the point or maybe you're already there where it goes, okay, you have a leak in your shower based on the amount of leakage we see yeah. or a leak in, you know, the toilets running or whatever the case is, you know? Yeah. And that, that's where we're heading to, you know, based off that flow rate, based off of like the way it ramped up or the way it ramps down is, is what we're looking at. Like, you know, saying this is your toilet or this is something out in your irrigation. And then um, I, I kind of alluded to it a little bit when I was talking about the indoor versus outdoor, mm -hmm. that's the kind of next um, problem that we've tackled. And that's also using machine learning. So we're starting to learn what outdoor usage looks like in versus indoor usage. Mm -hmm. And now we're taking that a step further to, to eventually get down to the appliance level. Um, so to automatically like, you know, you can imagine you'd see a pie chart of your house and it says right. this much goes to your shower, this much goes to your toilets. Um, mm -hmm. Or you have inefficient toilets, um, you know, this is how much you could save if you did switch to more efficient toilets. And, you know, the possibilities are endless when you start taking it down to that level. Yeah. I know, I know we're also talking about um, homes a lot here, but are you seeing it, any usage in like agriculture, like, you know, facilities? Cause I mean, they use a ton of water, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so right now Flume is really focused on like residential and small mm -hmm. business. Um, and that's kind of, dependent on the technology that we've created to read the meters. Um, once you start going into agricultural and you start dealing with a lot larger pipes, the technology has to change a bit. Um, so that's just not an area that we're, we're focused on yet. I Can I go back to the home for a second? So when I think of AI, I'm thinking like one day, um, I don't know, one day your daughter likes to take really long showers. And so like the thing alerts you, right? And then like the water just shuts off after she's- I feel like this is a personal story on the left part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I really think there's some really cool stuff. You could just shut your water off. Yeah. You, you've been showering way too long. Down. You, got, you got 10 seconds to get that shampoo out of your hair. <laughs> yeah, well, so just really quickly, our our device, um, and there are some in the, in the um, sort of same space that do shut off the water, but our device does not actually shut off the water. Um, like in order to do that, we would have to forego that ease of installation um, because okay. that's where you have to start being in the pipes. So okay. ours is more like an alert, like, okay. hey, like we sense abnormal usage, like something's going on. Yeah. <laughs> like dad gets text alerts, like showers going on for longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> yes. Right. And to, and to James's point, you know, it's, it's for, it's for easy installation too, you know? So yeah. anyone can use. I mean, I think you mentioned before, is that what, like a 10 minute installation or a 15 minute installation? Yeah. Really? Okay, cool. Well, and then like you said to actually, so we allow users to set up like whatever rules they want as well. Um, and we see like a lot of rules that are basically like, 
daughter shower or son shower. <laughs> See, I told you. I told <laughs> so, you. I was that person. That's why I know. <laughs> yeah. So it's def- I we I, and I've heard from a lot of people that like that's exactly how people use this product is like to literally yell at their children. Uh, that's uh, you know <laughs> Nicolette's gonna get one, and then there's gonna be Nicolette shower in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. Well, you know, leave us with this, James. Um, you know, you started this, you and, and Eric kind of brought this um, to life. And I guess, what would you say to engineers who not only want to get involved in smart home technology, you know, but but like, how can we help them? What should they be thinking about as they're designing or trying to, or just trying to conjure up an idea? Yeah, and I think, um you know, my, my one like kind of core advice here would be like, look for real problems. Um, I think it's easy and I, and I'm an engineer myself too. So I I fall into this trap all the time. It's like, you just start building something, right? Um, like, Oh, this could be useful for me. Um, but unless there's like a tangible problem, like a problem where people are literally willing to throw money at you to solve, you know, that could be a great hobby and that could be a cool thing to make. But if you're trying to turn something into business, um, those are like really the things that you want to figure out um, before you start heading down the path um, and really starting to validate like your assumptions uh, by actually talking to people um, before you commit to that long and, and, and very <laughs> tough journey. <laughs> and I, I think the connected home space is, is a good example of that too. I think, you know, I see a lot of products where it's like, oh yeah, that, that, that's cool. But you know, I'm not sure that's like necessarily something that's going to have the ability to like really become, you know, mm-hmm. a big, uh, business, um, you know, might just be something that a few people are interested in, like a very niche group of people. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things you pointed out where I see a lot, cause I love connected home stuff, but a lot of times it's like, Really, if this is going to take me three hours or 10 hours to install, like something that takes 10 minutes, you're like, okay, good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I get this done really quick and then have the data I need or that information. Cause some of these, some of these connected home things, I mean, like you said, you don't want to start cutting pipes. You don't want to start, you know, drilling holes through your walls. You don't want to start doing those. You want to just be able to sort of plug it in and go as a, as a homeowner. Yeah, exactly. And those are all the things that you should figure out, um, you know, okay, you identified a problem. Now who's, um, you know, the actual paying customer? What do these people look like? And what are they actually, uh, what do they want? Um, <laughs> yeah, most people are not going to sit there cutting their pipes apart to install it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and there, there's use cases for it for sure. Um, but but yeah, the, the average sort of homeowner is, is looking for something very quick. <laughs> Well, James, this was really fun and I'm very excited right now. So can you let us all know where we can learn more about Flume and where we can get started? If we let me know where we can get started. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. So our website's flumewater.com and that's uh, one of the best spots to go and actually purchase the device and, uh, you know, you'll get shipped in, you know, one to two days. It's, It's very quick. You can also purchase our device on Amazon as well. So if you do have that prime membership, that's um, another good option all right. Awesome. Thank well, thank you so, you so much, James. We're excited. And uh, thanks for creating this. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys.